<laughs> Such a weird angle. Oh, okay. We are headed. <laughs> All right, so we are getting ready to hit the road to head to Reyna, which is probably the most iconic village in all of the Lofoten Islands. I've dreamt of this place forever, and somehow we have clear skies and a very strong aurora forecast. I personally couldn't be more excited. This is what I just hoped for when we booked the trip out. What do you think? It's gonna be insane. I think there's quite a lot of luck and a lot of skill in getting the Aurora perfect. And those guys who go out all night in Northern Norway, those guys are killing it because they spend all night out and that's what we're aiming for tonight. So Rain, where we're at the village we're at at the moment, has to be one of the prettiest in the world. I was lucky enough to be able to visit every kind of little cove and crack and alley in um, Lofoten, and this one has to be high off on my list. There is just so many different angles to shoot at. So at the moment we shot sunset and we are waiting out the aurora. So we're gonna be here for another five hours or something crazy. So we're here for like five hours waiting out the aurora and hopefully to get in some incredible shots. That peak right over there is exactly true north, so it's the spot to be. Last night we had one of the most incredible nights. We were waiting till two in the morning to get the Aurora much later than we thought. It's just getting so light here at the moment and the day is emerging with the night so there's actually no pitch black. But the Aurora came around 2.30 in the morning and we got back here at four. So what an incredible night. So today I'm gonna to quickly show you guys how I edit night shots. Last series you saw how Ryan edits his lifestyle and landscape photos. So if you guys want to check that out, head to the last series. But for today, I'm going to show you guys how I edit my night photography shots. So I've chosen this photo as I love how the northern lights arch over this amazing peak. As you can see, Ryan is in the foreground here, but that is not a problem at all because I took two different photos in the exact same spot so Ryan could get that unique angle he wanted down there and I could get my photo. So. I'm gonna whiz through this tutorial. So the first thing I'm gonna do is lens correction. This can really affect the overall outcome of the image, the exposure and the overall look. So make sure to do this first. I'm gonna add a little bit of vignetting because I like how it kind of leads you into the image almost. The next thing to do is kind of up the exposure so we can see what we're working with. Uh, one of the most important things also I think with Northern Light shots is white balance. I think it can really affect the feel of the image. So I think this is something to get really, really right. So have a big play around with kind of what the tones and feel of the image want. If you want it quite cold or you want it more warm. Next, gonna add a little bit of contrast just to bring everything together. Gonna leave the highlights where they are at the moment and bring down some later over these houses because it's a bit overexposed. Bring up the shadows a little, just to bring those details back. Bringing up the whites and blacks, just add a little bit more contrast. Um, as you can see, it's very orangey in the foreground, but we're gonna get rid of that. 
add a little clarity as well just to bring everything together i'm gonna leave those sliders um, there at the moment because it's already actually quite a vibrant image the tonal curve is such an amazing tool to use it has so many different options and how you can affect the image i recommend you guys have a massive play around with it if you haven't already you can do so so much with it you can lift the blacks you can get quite a vintage look but i like to keep it quite clean so i'm going to leave it quite basic like that but it adds just so much to the image so i highly recommend you have a play with that if you haven't already these tools are so so useful to changing the, the colors and all these amazing things you can do, do with raw imaging processing so i'm just going to play with the greens a little in the northern lights just to bring them and then i'm going to play around with the blues as well it's, the deep blues are quite deep so i want to bring it a bit more magical and a bit more uh lighter so i'm going to bring down the saturation a little because the blues are super intense in there Next, this foreground has got so much orange in it, as you can see. I like how the houses have this really unique color. Um, I'm going to bring those back later, but for the moment, it's just so orangey on the snow and I don't like it. So I'm going to move those down a little and you can see how that plays out. Blues again, I'm just going to mess with the blues. Absolutely love trying to get those absolutely nailed down and the aquas. It just makes such an amazing northern lights. It's just so amazing how much you can change these tones. So I'm going to leave that how it is. Split toning, not going to go into this this time. Don't need it. Uh, detail. So going into detail, um, I'm going to add a bit of sharpness. I usually try to keep it about 50-55-ish and noise reduction. Luckily, I was using a D850 and the noise is hardly there at ISO 2000, which is so amazing. Um, but I'm just going to add a little bit of noise reduction to make this this image quite like dreamly looking like. Uh, color calibration, this is such an awesome tool to use. There's so many amazing things you can do with this if you know how to use it. I think sometimes people overuse it um, to get the teal and orange effect. People go too far with it. It creates so many options which you can do. So I'm pretty much just gonna play around with the blues again with this one, but I'm pretty much gonna leave it how it was. Um, I think mostly northern light shots are done on white balance. So now I'm going to move into different uh, gradient filters. Um, so for the first one, I want to just bring the northern lights up a bit, a bit to get those details. Uh, bring the whites up, bring a bit more contrast into the sky. There we go, very nice. I'm going to do one for the foreground, so I'm just going to raise that up, bring out the details and stuff. I don't want it to look too unnatural and too over lit but I want it to bring out those amazing amazing details so the next thing I'm going to do is bring back the saturation in the houses I love Norwegian houses the colors the vibrance of them but the orange was too overpowering on the snow but this is the way to get a little bit back so next I'm going to focus on these areas with too, too much highlight. It would be a better idea to shoot this in stages, but it's such a hard shot to get because of the Northern Lights is going and it can go any second. So we just want to shoot one or two frames. So next I'm going to copy and paste this whole preset so everything's exactly the same onto the other image without the Ryan. And then we're going to move it into Photoshop to finish it off. Here you go, one without Ryan. All you need to really concentrate is on that bridge part. You can really see in this image how much the northern lights change and how um, defiant they were at that moment. So you really got to capture it when you can. So I'm going to put the two images in Photoshop to get rid of Ryan and this horrible telephone wire across the whole image, which is going to be such a pain. So they're pretty easy, so it doesn't really matter which way you do it around, but you drag the other into that as so, and then use this masking tool in the corner. You press that and use the paintbrush so you flip it to black to white in the left hand corner down there. But it's a really easy fix. That's all I'm gonna use of that secondary images. And it's ready to get rid of that wire. You can use these two different tools, uh, this patching tool and this one for content to wear. Uh, this wire is actually gonna be such a pain. I'm just gonna work on it loads. These things just take time and time. So I really love this image that I've created. It's got a little bit more work to do on the right hand side. But as I said, it's just trial and error trying to get that texture right. And these northern light shots are super hard to get right when there's something because there's just so many details and it's always different in different places. So it's hard. 
This is one of my favorite images I've taken in Norway so far. It's just such a magical moment that this arch came over for a few seconds and I was able to get my camera out and get it shot. So I'm really, really happy with the results that evening. This was a really quick tutorial and I hope it was helpful for you guys. Um, and here are some final images of the evening.